Hello all. Today we are going to do a short interview with uh, Justin that have a very interesting project of our Kickstarter going. So hello Justin. I would like to know more about your project. Uh, of course. Um, uh, my name is uh, Justin. I am one of the hosts of the D&D show Crit Academy. Um, after 180 shows, we uh, had a lot of guests on and decided to dip our toes into content creation as far as publication for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Our latest Kickstarter is our attempt at solving a problem that 5th edition has in a fun and enjoyable way for all the players. If people don't know, one of the best parts of playing Dungeons & Dragons or 5th edition is the character creation process. But when it comes to weapons and armor, um, it's a little lackluster. So we wanted the the weapons and the armor to be uh, just as an important uh, aspect of character creation as some of the main features itself. So... I don't know if you're aware, but some of the equipment is exactly the same. Like, there's yes. not really a difference between a scimitar and a short sword. Exactly. The name is all that's different. Um, so, and pikes and pikes and spears and, and, and stuff like that, the halberd, a lot of those are similar too. Um, so, we wanted to make them stand out. So, we um, created exotic equipment perks, which basically allows us to um, give unique kind of uh, like mini feats to each individual weapon to make the choice of selection of the weapon and the armor really matter to the player instead of it just being, I'm going to take the one that I can that deals the biggest damage. And that's where exotic uh, equipment perks came came in. Okay, so um, all your projects focus on weapons? Uh, and armor, yes. The, and not armor. all the projects, the current one that's running. Okay. This will be our fourth Kickstarter. Could you tell me more about um, the content? Um, how big is it? How many weapons and mini feats do you bring? Oh, absolutely. So I think we're estimating uh, somewhere around uh, 70 to 80, uh, no more than 100 pages for this book. Includes Not only does it include uh, a perk for every single weapon in the player's handbook, but also every armor. And then when we went beyond that and also want to include some exotic weapons, we pulled the audience you know, we surfed the internet and figured out what is missing that people want. Um, and so we took some of those um, those requests and created new weapons that somebody can use with or without the perks, um, as well as enhance the existing items that already are there. Did we want to uh, uh, delve into fleshing out and making the choice of each weapon and armor piece matter? But we, of course, delve, dived into creating some of our new ones. And we have a good number of new uh, perks and uh, equipment pieces. So when it comes down to it, the uh, the overall count right now for the estimated uh, um, content is 36 weapon perks, 12 new exotic weapons with perks. So that's 12 new weapons on top of the on top of the 36 default. Um, there's 16 armor perks plus 16 new pieces of exotic armors and. Um, the perks themselves are really a lot of fun. As it stands right now, weapons don't really do anything other than damage. This is say, okay, how can we make these weapons um, more interesting? So for a good example would be the dagger. The dagger, each weapon has a unique, this is why we, it was designed, right? So for the dagger, for instance, it's designed to be a weapon used in stealth and cunning and ambush attacks. Would you agree? Yes, totally. So we decided to give it two perks. One is the hidden weapon. So as a bonus action, you can make a sleight of hand check and hide up to two daggers. If you attack somebody uh, with a hidden dagger, it crits on a 19 or a 20, not just a 20. Um, so now there's a little bit of um, reason to take that over, say, a rapier or a short sword which is usually the higher damage dice, uh, yes. items that a rogue, for instance, might take. Um, but that's that's one of the examples that's very situational. So we wanted to have, if we're going to give it a weaker uh, perk, we wanted to give it more than one. So we also gave it one called Cheap Shot. So when a creature within five feet of uh, you is hit with a critical hit, you can exploit the distraction and use your reaction to make a melee attack. So now... We gave it two smaller perks that have very specific conditions that focus on the the concept and idea of what a dagger is supposed to be. So this becomes a much more appealing weapon than it was before then. Okay. And when you're speaking about mini perk, is it like um, 
whenever you create your your character and you got this uh, weapon, you automatically uh, unlock this perk. So you're gonna really like this. So um, perks are available to anyone that's proficient with the item. We decided to go this route because then it encourages a shifting and changing of weapons in combat. Uh, when we polled people, the only time they ever really change their weapon is when they're attacking something at range or they get a new magic item. Otherwise, they tend to just pick one and stick with it. Mm -hmm. By allowing anyone that's proficient with a perk to gain its benefits, it opens up a wide variety of new um, options that become available to the character. For instance, a lot of characters can use daggers and are proficient with simple weapons. So anybody can carry a dagger. Now, the odds they're going to attack or hit somebody with it, you know, that's debatable. But it makes that now an available tool for the um, player. A good example of this in the dagger, it has a reactionary ability. So let's say the um, a character such as the ranger is has daggers. Drawing a weapon is a reaction as part of the attack. So if they're carrying a bunch of daggers on them on themselves, if some an enemy is critted, like a, an owl bear is critted by the barbarian with a great axe, they can literally draw their dagger and make an additional attack against it. So now our perks are encouraging players to rotate weapons and even armor throughout the game instead of just kind of sticking once they get it. So as long as you're proficient, you can use it, which actually makes some of the perks useful. One of the feats in the uh, player's handbook more useful there's a weapon master feat that i don't think anybody took we pulled like a thousand people and i think like less than a hundred people said they've actually taken it um so that makes that more expanding for people who want to get of get some of these perks as well okay very interesting so not only it's changed the the weapons but it's also gives some new uh, dynamics into the fights yeah very much so Regarding Kickstarter projects, um, a lot of projects are being late, late in, into delivery. So I would like to know where are you exactly into the development process? So all of our writing is done and the editing is nearly completed. Um, we do have art that is commissioned and is undergoing, um, but we are, uh, uh, going, we are on schedule at the moment. How long are you? Have you been playing RPG and D and D? Oh, geez, I'm about to date myself. Uh, I <laughs> first started playing D and D when I was 13. I think it was. I played a couple games of Second Edition. Okay. Um, and then I kind of my family wasn't. Some of my family weren't super gung ho about it. You know, the yes. whole satanic panic thing. <laughs> so I kind of fell away from D and D for a while. But it, may, it means I've I reached out to other RPGs like um. The one I played a lot at the time was Rifts, and then I kind of, as I got older, I fell out of it when I started going to college and I got married and stuff. Yeah. But I decided, you know what, I want to, I want to do this again. So I reached out to a bunch of my friends. I think Fourth Edition was out at the time, hmm. and we got together again. And it wasn't ah. until Fifth Edition came out. It wasn't until Fifth Fifth Edition came out that we really started playing regularly. Since then, I've completed several of uh, the campaign books that Wizards of the Coast uh, releases. Yep. Could you give me some peculiar story or some some fun story about one of your games? Oh, yeah, for sure. So uh, I played along because I got a million of these, but I'll give you one that I thought was one of the most... Uh, memorable uh, moments in any game that I've been in. Um, pe there's a reason people, uh, for those that are listening that haven't uh, heard it before, uh, there's a coin, a term coined for people who just want to kill everything called murder hobos. Yes. Um, and my group wasn't uh, without one of those. <laughs> so the players stumble into, uh, are traveling, you know, a scorching desert and, you know, they're going to this, they arrive at this town and all they find, the towns are empty, the the buildings are, are burned building uh, doors broken and, and beat down windows opened and they end up finding just like a, a massive exodus of feet leaving the city so they decided well something's wrong here now they're not promised any reward or anything but they think well if there's whatever's happened here is obviously bad look what's going on there's some you know corpses around and stuff so they decide they're going to be the good heroes and go find out what happened so they they track it down. It turns out a, a slave uh, trade came through and basically just enslaved this small village. And so they find they track it down to this little uh, valley, and about half of the um, the uh, villains, the slave traders, are in the bottom of this chasm, and they're you know feeding a few of the people that leads into this this cave. 
So one of the players was like, I'm going to start an avalanche. Like, and everyone's like, what, what are we going to, why are you going to do that? You're going to kill some of the people's like, yes, but we're going to get most of the slave traders. That's a risk I'm willing to accept. And there was a lot of very good role play traded at the table about the goods, the bads. They finally decided this is a bad idea. We're going to try to stop the person. The person's like, you're not going to stop me. Kaboom. They create an avalanche, kills lots of people. So it kind of goes through that. They finally did free up the people that were left, but it was only like 30% of the population that was down there. And so what I did, I was like, how am I going to, how am I going to challenge my players uh, that there are consequences for actions, especially stuff like this? So during the next session, I went through and I created NPCs with ideals, bonds, flaws, and personality traits. And instead of giving the char- letting the characters play their characters, they played witnesses to this event as the character who started the avalanche was being put on trial after the player characters turned her in. And so I had an entire day of like four hour game of us sitting in a courtroom and all the players pointing fingers and accepting bribes and all this kind of back and forth about what this character had done and it was single-handedly even to this day the best role play moment i had ever seen everyone got to see the uh the the player get their uh suffer the consequences of her actions she became wanted she was in prison she had to play a new character it was really just a a amazing moment and there wasn't any uh there wasn't any bad blood at the table because of it because it was done so well and if i could find a way to emulate that every game i feel like i would be amazing (laughs) Uh, last question. Mm-hmm. Would you have any advice for players that would like to, to start and try to be DM? Oh, yes, absolutely. The one thing that everyone always gets in a bunch about is there's so many rules. You don't need to start with rules. Get a pre, pre-designed module. Let's say the Lost Minds of Fandelver or one of the other ones that Wizards of the Coast released and just go. One of the things, the biggest hangups in people getting started is they think they have to know everything. You don't. In fact, I've been playing the game for years and I still, my player says, I was like, oh, is that really how that works? Because you're never going to know everything. And when you start, don't worry so much about the details of the rules. Your, your primary goal is to move the story forward and make sure everyone's having fun. And when you don't know a rule, write it down and it's, make a decision. Okay, If it's an advantageous position for the players, let them roll for it and give them advantage. If it's unfavorable, roll and disadvantage and then just move on. You can then go waste the, and use your uh, and use your off time away from the table to actually learn what the rule is. So when you guys come back again, you can say, okay, you guys, here's what I did last time. Here's the actual rule just so we know. Because most groups fall into boredom because of so much time looking through the books. Um, am I just go with the flow, just roll with it and, and really just get started. There were, there are people, creators like us at the crit Academy on our YouTube, as well as, um, uh, people like, uh, Matt Coville that are out there trying to help you with all the nitty gritty stuff, but you don't need all that to get started. Just play. Here is the end of our first interview. Thanks to Justin for answering our questions. You will find a link in the description. If you want more interviews, like and subscribe to the channel. May the dice roll in your favor.